Welcome! You have just tuned in to Awakening the Gift with Psychic Medium Montana Green, igniting a stream of consciousness within you. Are you ready to feel more comfortable talking about and trusting your own intuition? You can learn to embrace your own natural and subtle abilities. The possibilities are limitless. Hi, I'm Psychic Medium Montana Green, and together we will look at all of life, yourself, and your fellow living beings through an expanded spiritual lens by examining spirituality, mysticism, and metaphysics. Stay tuned for insights into the human energy field, spiritual principles, and tools on how to care for and utilize these for the highest and greatest good of humanity. Awakening to our spiritual gifts has never been more on time. Awakening to the gift starts now. Hi everyone, I'm Montana Green and you are listening to Awakening the Gift on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour and let us ignite a stream of consciousness in you. We will have insightful conversations about spirituality, higher consciousness, and all things metaphysical, helping to ignite a stream of consciousness in you. Today marks a very special episode as Awakening the Gift departs from the Transformation Network. You can still find the show on all podcasting platforms such as Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all the others as well as YouTube. All right, in today's episode, we are diving into the energies of Pluto and Aquarius. Beyond the rosy, idealized visions of the age of Aquarius lies a very powerful cosmic shift, one that brings both opportunities, but also some challenges. We're going to explore the full range of these energies, from the empowering to the disruptive, and how they may impact society and possibly impact you personally. Before we can embrace the humanitarian themes of the age of Aquarius, rebellious forces will slowly erode the old hierarchies and old structures. On a personal level, it's time to let go of any falsehoods. It's time to let go of anything that is not authentic for our souls and in our hearts. And as we let go of those falsehoods, that's how we step into our authentic power. So join me as we take a realistic and transformative journey through the profound astrological transition. All righty. I'm sure that everybody at this point has heard the age of Aquarius because it's been a pretty big topic over the last handful of years here as we transition from that old age into the new one. So, yes, there is just a little bit of... Um, disagreement on when precisely the age of Aquarius starts, but we're not going to deal with that today. We're just going to talk specifically about the next 20 years and the energies that's coming up with that as Pluto moves into Aquarius. So well beyond the utopian stories of rainbows and butterflies with the age of Aquarius, you know, we've all heard that, that it's going to be a time of peace and humanitarianism and equality and everything's going to be great. Well, sure, maybe later on, but not in the beginning, right? Because transition is always a little bit disruptive. Transition is always met with a little bit of power struggle, so to speak. So I figured what I would do for us today is go in a little bit deeper into what is Aquarius. So that astrological sign of Aquarius, what does it mean? What is the energies that it's bringing with it? What can we anticipate? So I do really encourage everyone out there at some point in your life, go get your birth chart done. And the beautiful thing about that is the internet is free. You can get a free birth chart done off of astro.com and many other online sites. So uh, you do just need to have your precise birth time, the place of your birth, and of course your birthday. Anyways, once you get that birth chart done, or if you already know it, I want you to pay special attention to where Aquarius is in your chart. So in your birth chart, there are 12 houses. One of those houses will be occupied by Aquarius. That's the important one, okay? So for the purpose of this conversation, I'm going to be speaking in terms of 
full sign birth charts, not Placidus, not Cook, not any of the other many options that we have out there for casting birth charts, but whole sign. It will just make it much better um, and easier to follow along with. Also, the reason why many astrologers prefer to use the whole sign system is because it's more accurate for predicting things. If you look at your Placidus birth chart, that's going to tell you more about your own psychology. But if you're looking to predict events in a person's life, the whole sign system is the better way to do it, in my opinion. Okay, so let's talk about Aquarius. What is that, right? Like, I've got a ton of Aquarius in my chart, so it's probably why I really feel compelled to talk a lot about this. And of course, that's the age that we're moving into. So Aquarius is about humanitarianism. It is about free thinking and free will. It's about being different. It is the sign of the black sheep, the, the person that's ahead of their time, the one that is kind of out there in left field, but actually has some really good ideas. Aquarius is a very intellectual sign. It's a very intelligent sign, and it is based very much off of rationale. That's why it's the sign of science and innovation and calculations. It's also the sign of space travel. So everything that has to do with the astros as well as higher consciousness. Aquarius is an air sign. So it's all about that mental plane. People with a lot of Aquarius, these aren't the ones that are going to be all gushy, like maybe a Cancer would be or a Pisces or some of the other softer signs. Aquarius is far more about lay out the facts and let me draw my own conclusion from it. So Aquarius is very much about consciousness and intellect. So those are going to be some of the big themes that we see over the next 20 years. On a macrocosm, so on that bigger picture, this is going to be the rising, the, the far more amplified rising of AI, right? Because it's science, it's innovative, it's all about intellect, and it's not necessarily about the heart or emotions. So absolutely predicting a lot of AI really, really getting strong. We'll talk a little bit more about that, too. Um, additionally, if you've been paying attention, you know that AI is on the rise. You know that that is, you know, something that that's just going to grow stronger and more prevalent. You don't need a psychic to tell you that if you've been paying attention. Now, not only do we have AI, this I think this is a very favorable time for disclosure. It's talking about aliens. It also will be medical advances. It will be more of the crypto. All of those things that are digital, that are science-based, that are technology, that kind of lovely thing. Now, here's another thing about Aquarius that sometimes gets overlooked, and that is because Aquarius energy is on the outside. It's kind of the black sheep. It's the outlier. It also represents the genius but also the criminal, okay? So I'm just gonna go on record now, and I know I've told many people this already, really be on the lookout for cyber crimes and any kind of like oppression that, that takes place via the internet. You know, this is surveillance things. This is the geo-tracking, that type of thing. So Aquarius, it's a wonderful, beautiful energy. Additionally, Aquarius, the, the, the glyph for that, the sign for that is a man pouring water out of a pitcher. But here's the thing. It's not actually water that he's pouring out, okay? It's actually a stream of consciousness, okay? So it is not a water sign, even though lots of people will call it aqua and think that it's a, a water sign. It's an air sign, and that's the stream of consciousness. So we can also anticipate a bigger explosion of human consciousness. This is people where the lights just come on. A lot more of those intuitive downloads. Um, epiphanies are really big with Aquarius. Again, you can just be going about your regular day and boom, the good idea fairy <laughs> pops up and gives you some really good insights to work forward with. So Aquarius is that wonderful energy of looking towards the future. So everything that's in the past, that old traditional stuff, is just going to slowly move more to the background. That's not to say that people won't still value some of those old traditional value systems and structures, they're still going to be there. Don't worry. It's not actually the apocalypse, uh, but they simply will not be societally valued quite as much. So 
Oh, another thing that Aquarius very much embodies is the transgender thing. That's the blurring of the lines. It's the cross-dressing. It's things that are not one or the other, but doing things that are outside of the norms. So we'll see a greater rise in that. Of course, there's going to be friction, right? This is kind of what I'm talking about with this episode is it's not going to be the age of Aquarius where it's so perfect and rainbows and butterflies right away. There will be tension between that transition of the old ways and the new ways. So it's great to embrace the future. If it is your personal values to hold on to something from, you know, the more traditional stuff, do it. Because that is also the thing about Aquarius. Aquarius is the free thinker. Aquarius is the independent. Okay. So do what is right for you. But again, on the macrocosm, these are going to be bigger themes. Now, Let's talk about Pluto, because why are we having this conversation? It's because Pluto is moving out of Capricorn and into Aquarius, and it's going to be there for the next 20-something years, starting on November 19th, 20th of this year, okay? So these are the energies moving forward. Now let's talk a little bit more about Pluto. I think Pluto gets a bad rap, and I can understand why, because Pluto... Pluto is pretty brutal. Uh, it is cold. It's it's hard. It's not a soft, warm, nurturing planet by any means. It is the planet of the proverbial death and rebirth. Don't worry. I'm not saying that a bunch of people are going to die. What I am saying is that old concepts, well, uh, old versions of ourselves, well, new things are coming through. And so there has to be a death of the old. I like to joke around and say that Pluto is very much like a colonoscopy. <laughs> Colonoscopies go deep. You can't hide anything from them. And they were going to all those forgotten little places, right? Pluto really is that planet of taking out the trash. It is about going deep, going dark, going to everything. Oh, let me open up my little chat here. Oops. Um, it, it's going deep and getting into all of those parts that aren't normally looked at. So Pluto, again, like I mentioned, is that death and rebirth. Okay, so something's got to change. Pluto is not here to make our lives hell, even though sometimes we experience it that way because change can be difficult. But what Pluto is really here to do is to just strip out everything that is not authentic, okay? So it wants to leave in its path only the stripped down, raw, authentic part of you and whatever area in your life Pluto is going to be occupying over the next 20 years. Like I said, go get your birth chart done. Go look at the whole sign birth chart and find out where Aquarius is for you. That's where Pluto is going to be, right? Because it's going to be occupying uh, Aquarius. So it wants to strip away everything that is fake. It wants you to get rid of all of your falsehoods. It wants you to get rid of the mask. It wants you to get rid of any of the ways that you've been lying to yourself, any of the ways that haven't been healthy for you. Additionally, Pluto is a very intense planet. That's why it's called Brutal Pluto, right? It's intense. It's also associated with obsession. It's obsess uh, associated with addictions, uh, things along those things. Also, oppression, manipulation, things like that. How are you manipulating yourself? How are you letting other people manipulate you? What are you doing that might be toxic for you? And it might be time to get rid of that. That is kind of the purpose of Pluto here. It wants to strip away everything that's no longer needed. As in, if you've been holding on to an old self-limiting belief, Hey, great time to get rid of that. If you've been sticking with um, a role or an identity that is just old, that isn't working for you anymore, isn't allowing you to thrive, this next 20 years is an opportunity to slowly dismantle it, okay? Oftentimes, Pluto does not come through in one big fell swoop. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does. But on the whole, it's a very slow-moving planet. So this is a slow disrobing of falseness around us. Okay, so uh, like I said, Pluto was death and rebirth. So of course, it's the phoenix. 
Here's what you need to know. Yes, you might feel like you're going through hell. Yes, you might feel like you're really being tested and you got to let go of some things and it's intense and it's hard. But I guarantee you, you will live through it. You will get past it. And I'm going to talk a little bit more later on in the show about how we've all lived through Pluto trans um, transiting signs before, okay? This is not necessarily a once in a lifetime. It's the first time in Aquarius, but Pluto has made changes in your life before, okay? So you're gonna live through it. Anyways, with Pluto and that Phoenix energy, it is all about going to the depths of you, burning down what no longer is necessary, what doesn't help you thrive and feel alive, and then rebuilding yourself. And on that note, we are going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about what we can anticipate and the best ways to use these energies. So you are listening to Awakening the Gift on Transformation Talk Radio with me, Psychic Medium Montana Green. We're going to take a quick little break. And when we come back, we're going to dive deeper into the chaos and the opportunities that Pluto and Aquarius brings to us. So stay tuned. We will be right back. We're back on Awakening the Gift with me, Psychic Medium Montana Green. Today, we are taking a realistic look at Pluto in Aquarius over the next 20-year period and how it might affect you. But before we continue, I do want to make sure that everybody knows how to contact me. If you're trying to reach me, the best way to do so is through my website, which is whisperingleafpsychic.com. And remember, you can always catch this podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all other podcasting platforms, as well as YouTube coming up. All right, before we went to break, we were talking about Pluto and that regenerative quality of Pluto. As I was saying, Pluto's not really here to make your life hell. What it is here to do is strip away those things that just aren't necessary anymore. It's literally to help you take out the trash. That could be taking out the psychological trash from last week or last decade, right? Pluto goes deep. Pluto is all about getting down to that basement bottom level of what is going on within you, okay? So as I was saying also, Pluto is associated with some of the darker stuff like addictions, obsessions, controlling behaviors, those type of things. So in the, the collective, we do need to watch out for da, 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 AI and technology being used to oppress the people. Like I said, also, you know, this is cybercrime as well. So I do want to say Aquarius being that free thinker, being the one that's got the opinion that's totally different than everybody else's. And they're cool with that. If we want to truly embrace that Aquarian energy, we have to support free speech. So please do not support any kind of censorship because that could be something that has a bunch of unintended consequences that really gets out of control. Just fair warning there. Okay. So Pluto, like I said, when it burns everything down or when you feel internally compelled to burn something down in your life, you're also going to be rebuilding it, right? And so we come back stronger through these death and rebirth cycles. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more personally about how this might affect you, right? So right now, Pluto is in Capricorn, and that means the cardinal signs have really been under that, that Pluto influence for the last 15 years. Well, now it's getting ready to be the fixed signs. What are the fixed signs? That is Aquarius, that is Leo, that is Taurus, and that is Scorpio. So if you've got any personal planets and any of those signs, they are going to be affected a little bit more by this. Like I said, you can go get a free birth chart. You can go visit an astrologer. There's a million ways for you to find out these things. But those fixed signs being activated will have the biggest impact, right? So um, personal planets, let's talk a little bit about that. Your personal planets are the sun, the moon. Mercury, Venus, and Mars, and of course, your rising sign. So once again, check to see, do you have any of those fixed signs that are, you know, occupied or represented by those planets? Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio. Okay. Like I said, 
in everyone's birth charts, we all have 12 houses, Aquarius occupies one of them. So let's just kind of go through a little bit about how that might affect each one of those houses or what you can look forward to with this. Again, this is just a brief little summary. And I also want to point out that everything happens on a continuum. So we've got the very positive and we've got the somewhat negative and everything in between, okay? So it is very possible to have some very positive uh, events or feelings come out of this as well as peppered with some negative or vice versa or any mixture in between. So let's talk a little bit about what if Pluto is residing next to your sun. Let's talk about the planets first. If Pluto is making any kind of aspects, whether it's conjuncting it, opposing it, sextiling, trining, squaring, whatever, if it's having any kind of interaction with your sun, this could feel, this could bring you a lot of personal power, okay? Because it's sort of lending that Plutonian power of being able to be very deep, very intense, to withstand the fires and trials and tribulations of life and come out on the other side. So that's kind of the positive end of it. Also, because Pluto is the underworld, it is also intuition, okay? But let's talk about the less positive here. If Pluto was interacting with your son, that could be you being very powerful, but it could also be you being a little bit obsessive, you trying to be a little bit controlling, or somebody else outside of you trying to be controlling, manipulative, um, that kind of thing. So we do need to kind of watch out a little bit. Like I said, everything happens on a continuum. The purpose of this show is just to simply prepare you, kind of give you a heads up of what is going on. So if you feel like somebody is opposing you or trying to control you or working against you, it is better for you to face that situation rather than try to deny that it's happening. Also, own your own power, right? And just know that you can get through anything. We go through lots of things in life, but they typically don't kill us. Okay, let's talk about the moon. Similar to the sun, okay, it's another luminary in the sky. But if Pluto is interacting with your moon, whether that is um, opposition, square, <laughs> sextiling, any of the any of the aspects here. If Pluto's going up against your moon, you're going to feel a lot of emotional intensity, right? Because that moon is our internal feelings. It's our thoughts and feelings. And it also represents the female reproductive system, cycles, hormones, all of those things. So Pluto bringing its energy to that can mean some very intense emotions. This also can be bringing up emotions from the past, all those buried things, okay? So that is, again a time to go deep within yourself. I highly recommend if your moon is being aspected or interacted with by Pluto, you know, therapy is a great thing to do. Any kind of in-depth personal work on you. Okay, also Mercury, let's take a peek at that. So what if Mercury is aspecting or interacting with your Mercury? Mercury is our thoughts, it's the way that we communicate. It's the information that we take in. It's also our neighborhood, our siblings, how we interact with our peers type thing. So Pluto bringing its intensity to that can be bringing up information or thoughts from a long time back. Also bringing up old issues with peers or with siblings or with, you know, within that local community. Oftentimes when I see Mercury and Pluto interacting, there's some kind of intense news that arrives to the quarant. So typically they hear some startling or groundbreaking information that comes to them. So expect intense news during that time. Also just intense thinking. So watch yourself that you're not letting things live rent free in your head. Um, additionally, since Mercury is communication and Pluto is deep and intense, you do got to watch out for people trying to control you with information or control your thinking. Something to look out for. All right, let's talk about Venus. So if Venus and Pluto are interacting with each other, what can you anticipate? I love Venus. Everybody loves Venus, right? Venus is what we attract to ourselves. It's money. It's relationships with other females. It's the good and beautiful things, the aesthetics in life, right? So if Pluto and Venus are interacting at all, you can expect intense attractions. 
Okay. Also, what I have also noticed, I had a client that had this happen. She had Pluto and Venus in her acting and she had a female friend that was literally trying to manipulate her for money. Very real world there. So be on the lookout for that. Also, it can mean being very, very strong in your sexuality as a woman, which means you got a lot of that blah, blah, boom going on for you. And a lot of intensity around acquiring money, acquiring possessions, valuables, those kind of things. It's really easy for people to get really wrapped up in their looks, um, like really intense vanity when Pluto and Venus are also interacting. So keep that in mind also. Okay, moving on to Mars. So if Venus is the female, okay, in astrology, Venus is like the girlfriend energy and Mars is like the boyfriend energy. So Mars, this is a really tricky one. You kind of want to keep your eyes open for this. If your natal Mars and Pluto are interacting with each other, be real careful about fights that come up because Mars is a, it's a planet of, of breaking apart. It's surgeries, uh, injuries. It's the warrior. It's also athleticism. But again, with Pluto being there, take special care of your body. Mars is also representing our physical bodies. Be careful with your body, please. Uh, don't take any unnecessary risk if you really don't have to. Now, what I would also really encourage everyone to do is look at the degree point. I know I'm going very deep into astrology here, but look at the degree point that Mars is at if let's say, for example, if you've got Mars at 15 degrees Aquarius and Pluto's at 15 degrees Aquarius, watch out for accidents. Watch out for people trying to uh, not be kind to you. Uh, these can be attacks. It's that kind of thing. So really be smart about that. And again, because Aquarius is information, do these attacks necessarily have to be physical? Not really. Think about attacks over the Internet, right? Aquarius is Internet. It's information. It's intellect. So. Just a couple of things to keep your eye out for. You want to choose your battles real carefully and just be very cautious and very careful when Pluto and Mars are having any kind of interactions there. Again, the purpose for all of this is not to make you miserable, though, right? Pluto is about finding your power. And Pluto in Aquarius is about evolving your consciousness. So just know that these trials and tribulations are actually to help you grow on a spiritual level. All right. On that topic, we are going to take a break. Like I said, we will come back and we'll talk a whole lot more about these energies of Pluto and Aquarius and the endings and beginnings that come along with it. I am Montana Green, and you're listening to Awakening the Gift, Igniting a Stream of Consciousness in You. When we come back, we'll jump right back into this. So stay tuned. We will be right back. We're back on Awakening the Gift with me, Psychic Medium Montana Green. Today, we are taking a deep look at Pluto and Aquarius and its impact on both society and ourselves and some tips and tricks to navigate these changes. But before we begin, I want to make sure if you guys want to get a hold of me, the best way to do so is through my website at whisperingleafpsychic.com. And remember, today's episode is the last one on the Transformation Network, but you can always find this show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Alrighty, let's jump right back into it. So we're talking about Pluto and what we can expect. We've already covered some very small snippets of what Pluto interacting with your personal planets can bring about. Now let's go in a little bit more about what about Pluto in each one of the 12 houses. So briefly going through Pluto with its intensity. And again, it's bringing intensity of intellect, intensity of information, of evolving your consciousness. OK, so those are the themes of those next 20 years. Let's say Pluto in Aquarius is residing in your first house, which again is the house about you. That's your physical container. That's your avatar. That's your personality. It's the way that you show up in the world. So if that Pluto in Aquarius is in your first house, this means changes and evolution to the way that you show up in the world. So this can be evolving your personality, evolving even your looks. 
Pluto being intense and being a little bit, you know, dark and Aquarius being a little bit different. Maybe you decide to get face tattoos. Hey, you do you, boo. <laughs> but it would be making changes to you as a person. Okay. Also, Pluto in that first house is a great time to detox, detox, detox. Get, get out any of the crap that you might be putting into your body or putting into your consciousness. Okay. What happens if Pluto in Aquarius is occupying your second house? The second house is money. So there can be a lot of intensity around money, what you value. Um, maybe that can make changes to you no longer want to work 60 hours a week for this amount of money and you don't value the big house and car anymore. And now you want to go get a farm. <laughs> Whatever the, the story may be for you, it is a slow change in your value system around money. Again, because Pluto, like if I had Pluto in Aquarius in my second house, I would absolutely be keeping a very strong eye on my credit reports, on my accounts, things like that. Because Pluto in Aquarius, again, I do absolutely, and not just me, but a lot of people are foreseeing more cybercrime. So keep an eyeball on your money there, kids. Okay. But again, evolving your value system and how you manage finances, your possessions. You might decide to get rid of a bunch of stuff, declutter, and maybe go out, get things that resonate more with who you really are. Okay. What about the third house? So that third house is that, that house of communication. It's kind of our daily, um, surroundings, our daily habits, the people that we encounter, our thinking, the way that we communicate and express ourselves is also that third house and it's commuting. So Pluto in Aquarius in that third house could be some slow changes to the way that you communicate. Um, also, the way that you think this could be very favorable, um, having Pluto and Aquarius in that third house for literally evolving your consciousness, for evolving even your skill sets, because the third house is also skill sets. OK, I would also be, you know, kind of on the lookout for, like I said, intense information. So Pluto being so intense. And that third house being about information, transactions, exchanges with others. You know, there could be some intense exchanges with others. Pick your battles carefully. Okay, let's look at it in the fourth house. So what if Pluto in Aquarius is occupying your fourth house? That fourth house is about our home. It's our roots. It's what provides us emotional security. Yes, it means family and it means the mother, but that can also be those that are like family to us, okay? So Pluto in Aquarius in that fourth house would be indicative of making changes to the home and family. I'm gonna share something personal for you. When Pluto crossed into my fourth house, that's when I conceived my first child. It was a, a surprise, <laughs> but... It definitely made a very big impact on my life. It was such deep transformation because, again, Pluto makes changes. It makes deep transformation. For me, parenthood has been one of the most transformative and deep and unbelievable experiences of my life. So, again, Pluto in that fourth house is making changes to that home base, that family unit, that the, what you do for love and get love. And again, it can also represent intense people. So I want to, you know, kind of clarify that it throughout any of the houses, Pluto can represent intense people. Just because they are intense does not mean that they are bad, but you know, there are people that just come in with a little extra power in life. And the only reason why they do that is to help you find your own personal power, okay? All right, so what about Pluto in the fifth house? I have seen this oftentimes with people being very strong love affairs, okay? So really strong attractions, really intense obsessions over people, okay? I've seen that a lot with clients where when Pluto is in that fifth house and the fifth house is love, romance, sexuality, expression, it's children. And again, the fifth house being anything that we create, we create children, we create a good time for ourselves, we recreate, we have a sense of humor. All of those things can take on a far more intense vibe. And like I said, Pluto oftentimes can 
represent a person. It's not just a person, but including a person. So anyways, fifth house, also speculation. This is gambling. This is also um, entrepreneurship. Keep that in mind with Aquarius being also a free thinker. Aquarius is also really good for speculation, for those flashes of genius that maybe can make you money. If Pluto in Aquarius is occupying your fifth house, this might be a good time to start new entrepreneurial projects, start new hobbies that you really love. Um, you know, do make sure that they're healthy for you, though, right? Because there is that little element of the obsessiveness kind of thing and addictions. So enjoy life in the fifth house, but still keep it in balance kind of thing. Okay, uh, let's move on into the sixth house. What if Pluto in Aquarius is occupying the sixth house? Your sixth house is health. It's your lifestyle routines. It's the way that you take care of yourself. It's what you devote yourself to. So you devote yourself to your health, your daily habits, your work, as well as your plant, pant, well, I'm so sorry. Yes, your plants, but also your pets, right? So Pluto in that sixth house can mean evolving the way that you take care of yourself, evolving what you do for health, evolving what you do for work. It's wanting to make changes in that area and get rid of anything that's not working for you anymore. Okay, let's move into that seventh house of relationships, partnerships, and agreements. So marriage is a legal agreement. Business mergers are legal agree agreements. Anything that you sign on the dotted line one-on-one -on -one with somebody is really occupied by that seventh house. Pluto being that planet of intensity in the sign of kind of eccentric and different people can indicate that you could be meeting or partnering up with people that are different, a little bit intense, uh, innovative, eccentric kind of thing. Pluto in the seventh house can also be very um, obsessed about relationships, okay? So this is another place you wanna watch out that you're not being controlled by your relationships or being controlled by your agreements with other people, but it can also indicate some very powerful new agreements, okay? All right, uh, we'll jump into Pluto in the eighth house. Well, the eighth house is already the house of Pluto. That's where all the secrets live. Imagine Pluto as being that closet with all the little secrets and skeletons and, and deep private things. So traditionally, the eighth house is about, you know, your psychology. It's about what you do with other people in private, whether that's sexuality, whether that's business, whether it's other things. But when Pluto occupies that space, it's really telling you to dig deep, get out anything that is hindering your personal power and find that consciousness that makes you the most powerful and resilient person that you can be. Uh, once again, I would really ask you to keep an eyeball out for people or things that might be a little bit toxic or might be a little bit manipulative if that shows up in that eighth house. Okay, Pluto in the ninth house. This can be very, being very intensely passionate about philosophy, uh, right and wrongs, your belief system, also meeting foreigners, okay? And in 2024, 2025, in our day and age, meeting foreigners happens all the time online, okay? So you don't always have to go, you know, cross the seas to get there, but it, you can be very intense about these new alliances, the new beliefs that they bring to you. The ninth house is also spirituality, so it, there's a lot there. Okay, what about Pluto in the 10th? Uh, this, this can be a good one. This can be you finding your power on the public stage, uh, being powerful in your career, in your legacy, in your professional reputation. It, oftentimes what I see with this too, though, is another person that's an authority figure or um, a superior, an elder that is trying to kind of control you. <laughs> so find your power and don't let another person control you there. And also don't become a slave to your job or your public reputation. Okay, Pluto in that 11th house, we're almost done with these houses here, but Pluto in the 11th house can mean very passionate, very intense feelings around humanitarianism, around making community. Also, what I see with people oftentimes is people will meet new friends that can be very powerful and influential for them. 
All right, then we've got Pluto in that 12th house. I'm gonna be totally honest with you here. Typically when I see Pluto in the 12th house is because somebody has passed away. So the 12th house definitely is that house of endings. This is the doorway between the physical world and that spiritual world again. Pluto being the planet of death and rebirth, if it occupies that 12th house, it doesn't mean you're going to die. It means potentially, only potentially, um, that somebody that you know can pass. And again, death is a natural part of life. We all know that people are going to, you know, pass before us. We're going to outlive some folks. I don't want you to think that this is a crisis moment necessarily, just kind of reminding everyone that death happens. But typically, Pluto in that 12th house can indicate the death of someone. Now, additionally, it can be the death of self-sabotaging habits for yourself. That's kind of on the positive end of things. All right. I would also recommend if you've got Pluto in that 12th house, watch out for people uh, behind the scenes messing with you or trying to control you or trying to oppress you in any way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a break. Um, I am Montana Green, and you're listening to Awakening the Gift, Igniting a Stream of Consciousness in You. When we come back, we're going to zero in on a couple of different strategies to help you navigate these changes. So stay tuned. We will be right back. We're back on Awakening the Gift with me, Psychic Medium Montana Green. Today, we're taking a deep look at Pluto's ingress into Aquarius and its impact on all of us. And again, some tips and tricks and some strategies for navigating these changes. So we just covered Pluto in Aquarius through the houses. Obviously, that was just a little snapshot. There's way more to it. But the thing I really want to drive home is that Pluto is here to strip away anything that's fake, okay, and leave you with the most authentic version of yourself. So as it makes its movements into each one of these areas of your life, what you need to know is to surrender, to let go. So with Pluto, <laughs> it's going to make these changes whether we want it or not. Okay. This is again, it's a, it's an evolution that happens over time. Yes. Sometimes Pluto can come in like a wrecking ball and it can be a total 180 change like that tower moment in life. But oftentimes these changes are much slower. Okay. What we end up doing because we're all human beings. We like the comfort zones we built. We like our habits and our structures. The human brain loves predictability, right? So when the universe is asking us to change, our human selves can oftentimes be like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I want to hold on to these old ways. The best advice here is wherever Pluto is occupying in your birth chart, don't try to hold on, okay? So I'm going to give an analogy of water skiing. You know, I love all water sports, but in water skiing, you're holding on to the rope and the boat is pulling you. If you fall, but you keep holding on to that rope, the boat is just going to keep pulling you across that water and you're just going to get beat up. So what's that? What's the goal here? Let go, let go. So whatever Pluto is taking away, don't try to hold on to it. OK, you can still keep your convictions. You can still keep your love for it. But don't try to hold those old ways. OK, because a lot of this Pluto stuff, again, this is evolving your consciousness. Much of this will be internally within your own head. Let go of the old beliefs. Let go of the things that aren't working anymore. And if you feel like you're beating your head up against the wall, you probably are. So stop. Right. Right. You have to embrace that where Pluto goes, it kills something, something dies, and it will not be resurrected, okay? So in the context of like a breakup, um, this is where that person is not coming back, okay? So don't hold out hope for it, or don't hope that, oh, that's okay, this job will figure out that I was really fabulous, and they're going to come back around to me. That's not how Pluto works. It's simply not how Pluto works. So whatever Pluto comes in and crushes and kills and, you know, brings death to, you have to accept that that death has happened and move forward. Evolve. Okay. So let go of the rope. Don't hang on. Also, surrender. 
probably one of the hardest things to do as a human being is to surrender to things that we don't necessarily like or things that are outside of our preferences. But that's what evolution is. That is part of what is evolving our soul. Okay, so surrender and give yourself some grace with that. You don't have to surrender and, and make these changes and expect to be like a perfect little angel throughout it. You can have all the emotions you're going to have about it. Now, that also brings up another great suggestion for Pluto. Okay, therapy, any kind of healing practices. Why do I say that? Because Pluto is that planet that wants to take out the old, the dying, the toxic and, and provide space for something new to be born and to thrive and grow from. So detox, detox your mind, detox your thought beliefs, detox, you know, anything in your life that is no longer healthy. So therapy of any kind, whether that's going to be, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, whether it's going to be hypnosis, I would say because Pluto is such a deep planet, it's, the deeper therapy, the better. So that's like the EMDRs. That's the hypnosis. That can also be some of those psychedelic, I'm not telling you to do drugs, but um, any of the deeper psychedelic kind of things. I know there's a lot of therapies out there these days, but this could be a very good time to explore some of those. Once again, you know, use good judgment on your own. I'm not telling you what to do. Additionally, what's another great strategy here? Journaling. Why do I say that? Because journaling helps you tap into the deeper inner wisdom within yourself. And through journaling, we can access that stream of consciousness, that higher level of thinking. So this is a perfect time for that. I also just want to say Pluto in Aquarius really, really encourages us to be our own authentic selves. Now, I'm sure that you've already heard this, but the number one regret of dying people is that they didn't have the courage to be true to themselves. They didn't have the courage to do the things that lit them up inside because they were so worried about what everybody else was thinking. Well, this Pluto and Aquarius energy is very favorable for not caring what others think so much and doing what is right for you. So go out there, live your very best life, do the things that light you up inside, even if that means you're a little bit of the black sheep for it. And again, I highly recommend go get your birth chart done. Go get your astrology chart done. You can do that for free on astro.com. Just plug in your information there. And again, recognize or look where Aquarius is, what house in your birth chart it is. And that's where you're going to know that Pluto and Aquarius is going to be occupying for the next 20 years. So that is the place in your life that you have the opportunity to burn something down and rebuild it from the ashes and evolve your consciousness. All right. And once again, just want to remind you all, as scary as some of this sounds, I guarantee you, you have lived through Pluto cycles before, okay? Pluto has crossed into different signs and different parts of your birth chart or different parts of your life several times in your lifetime already, okay? Unless you're like 10 years old, maybe it hasn't yet. But if you've got any years on yet, you have lived through this before. You will live through this one as well. See this as an opportunity to evolve your consciousness and to be true to yourself. Now, next year is going to be a very interesting year. 2025 is there. A lot of the lines are going to get blurred. We also have the North Node moving into the sign of Pisces. Pisces has no boundaries. It's all about spirituality and wishy-washiness and sometimes flakiness and victim mentalities and blah, 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 all of that stuff. There's going to be a lot of gray area. And a lot of bumpy things that go down in 2025. Your goal with this is to find your authentic self. Be true to your own personal convictions, even if the outside world is not reflecting that. And be a good human, right? And be good to yourself. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. It is always my pleasure connecting with you. And um, yeah, thank you for joining me for this deep dive. Also, before we get to the power of the people, it's going to be a rough transition. It's going to be filled with both those breakdowns and breakthroughs. 
And those are all necessary for true transformation. So I wish you the greatest amount of success in your personal transformations. And may it go smoothly for you. And may you have grace for yourself when it doesn't. Now, obviously, society will face disruptions, but from that chaos is going to come the opportunity to build something new and something authentic. On a personal level, these cosmic shifts invite us all to step into our own personal power by releasing the old mask and embracing who we truly are. I hope this episode has given you insight into how to navigate these energies with clarity and strength. Although today's episode is the last on the Transformation Network, I want to remind you all that you can keep listening to every podcast on every podcasting platform, such as Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and it will be on my YouTube channel. So until next time, stay true, stay authentic, and may the transformations be always in your highest and greatest good. Bye for now. You have been listening to Awakening the Gift with Psychic Medium Montana Green, igniting a stream of consciousness within you. To find out more of what is needed to shift your consciousness above the ordinary, tune in to Transformation Talk Radio every second and fourth Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific. Each show we examine spirituality, mysticism, and metaphysics, along with the tools to help us achieve our lives' missions. To connect with me, visit whisperingleafpsychic.com.